Welcome to the English Project. Now for your host, Nicholas Siever. Hey, hey, um, yo, hey. Right, um, our first topic is going to be uh, the riots at Attica. It was a terrible, terrible event. Guards, prison inmates, they all. It was a huge shabam that just really, really, really was just not handled very well by really anyone. The governor, the police. But to uh, talk, and elaborate, uh, talk and elaborate that, we'll go to our senior correspondent, Nicholas D. Lumberjack Seaver. Well, thank you, Nick. Um, I'm outside uh, Attica Prison right now, and the question is, what could have been done to stop this tragic accident? Well, there are actually a number of theories going around. The first theory is that if America knew what was going on at Attica beforehand, that there would have been such a big, big, big outcry that the, demand, the public would demand that these humans have actual human conditions, not subpar. It would also change Governor Rockefeller's position on the situation, because he is running for re-election, as we all know, so he'd have to handle it in such a humane way, instead of going in and shooting everyone up. The second one is, instead of attacking, the governor could have said okay to some of the demands to let them wait or when they would eventually run out of food and water and calm down. Now we all know that Attica was a prison and it was being sieged. Because of this, they could not get any food or water. Now, they would have to, they could only last a couple weeks before having to go out through thirst and dehydration and hunger. So that was another position that the governor could have taken to actually remedy the situation. And then three, if the prison was actually better regulated by the states. Attica was notorious for having to disobey regulations set by the state. The state would come in and say why there was something wrong, but Attica would refuse to do this. So if they actually complied by state regulations, maybe this intolerable, this subpar human conditions could have been actually reversed where the guards would not beat these inmates, but instead show them the same respect as they would each other. They would also have food and water like everyday humans, and not one roll of toilet paper, because your hand gets quite stinky after a while. Also, if the guards actually, the most simplest thing is if the guards actually check if all the things were, all the cells were locked, because many times they actually forgot to do it that night. The reason why the prisoners could get out was because of a malfunctioning prison lock in the, in the prison. It didn't lock because a prison, prison mate had jammed a, jammed a screw... Mm, no, sorry, mate. Sorry, Nick. It was not a screwdriver. I just forgot this. It was actually a just piece of any object that was shoved into the lock so that it wouldn't close properly. The guards, not really caring, did not check it out. So that's basically the theories going around on how it could have been remedied and why it, on how it could have been better. Back to you, Nick. That was some vigorating uh, news that you're just telling us in. Yes, I just got this in. Our um senior correspond, our senior law correspondent has actually come as telephone in and said, "What?" what legally these men can do and what would happen. Over Now I'm going to take you over to my senior law correspondent, Nicholas D. Lawyer Seaver. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, within four years of the riots, 62 inmates have been charged with 42 indictments with 1,289 counts and only one State Trooper was indicted for reckless endangerment. That is travesty, I say. How can these prison guards that were beating these inmates only get one charge while these inmates who were protesting so that they would have equal human rights, human rights and conditions, had 1,289 counts brought against them? No. The inmates and families of the inmates killed in the prison riot retaking sued the, you know, the state of New York for civil rights violations by law enforcement's office during and after the retaking of Attica. After 27 years in the courts, in 2000, the state of New York agreed to pay $12 million to settle the case. The state of New York also recognized the families of the slain prison employees in the autumn of 2004 with $12 million in financial statements. 
Many people attribute the riot to the racial issues inside the prison at the time. Of 2,243 inmates, 54% were African American, 9% were Puerto Rican, and 37% were white. However, all of the 383 correctional officers were dun 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 Caucasian. From reports on the prison conditions, some correctioners officers were openly racist and assaulted the prisoners with their batons, which they dubbed nigga sticks. During this time period in the country, black militancy was at its peak and several prisons had their black militants transferred to Attica. Additionally, George Jackson, a member of the Black Panther Party, died at the hands of white prison officials only a few days before the riot in San Quentin State Prison in California, adding to the racial tension. The aftermath of the riot called for major, ma major prison reform, especially in the treatment of minority inmates who are becoming a majority in several states' correctional facilities across America. Now, after the riots, a case was brought forth, Al Jundi versus Mancusi, which it was believed during the case that a group of Muslims were responsible for, for the uprising and the harm of the hostages, when in fact the group of Muslims were protecting hostages from other inmates. The leader of the Muslims even told the inmates that if any of the inmates tried to hurt the hostages, to kill the inmates or die protecting the hostages. The case was eventually dropped on the fact that, really, the Muslims were actually protecting them. Now back to you. Thank you for uh, tuning in tonight to see this uh, special edition of the English, the English Show. Um, our hearts and prayers go out to the uh, 39 people that died that day. Um, we hope that you continue to go on throughout your life without all the stress and stuff that has happened and the pain that you've had to go through. And we wish that this would never happen again. Uh, thank you and good night. <laughs>